Thank you, Jesus Christ. Today is uh, 22nd of uh, uh, June 2004, and we are having a very brief meeting with our team. Thank God. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I welcome all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let us, uh, we should, it's one thing very important, let us all be punctual to help us to be, uh, to be able to cover up many things. All right? Please. Uh, last week I had one-on-one -on -one meeting with some of us. Uh, it was very good. It was very cordial. And we are trying to meet with the rest of our team by next week, by the grace of God. Uh, there's one thing to know when we say uh, on our own we can do nothing we are uh, this term means it's more spiritual than physical people think that when they say on our own we can do nothing it means we should just sit at home and wait for God to do everything for us because we can do nothing on our own no that is not what it means right so when we say on our own, we can do nothing. This is purely spiritual. It's purely spiritual. You should know that. So that you know that as a human being living on earth, you have responsibility to, to, uh, to go out and walk and uh, do things. For example, you have a meeting and uh, you were supposed to be there. The target is for you to plan to be there on time but you for whatever reason you delay and then you will now later he to claim things that uh, you know the will of whatever no you have to know learn how to plan things this is very important mm -hmm. a time you have to walk don't waste this time doing other things so that at the end of the day you will not go to bed with an empty stomach. Right? This is important. We understand the book of Genesis, chapter 3. God said to Adam and Eve, uh, God sent them out of the Garden of Eden. From that time, they live as a mortal human mortal. Alright? And before, in the Garden of Eden, they can actually speak things, you know, speak the word, when they speak the word, they become, you know, they speak, they become. But here on earth, we are asked to walk, walk here as a mortal man. We have a responsibility to walk. So this is not the case we have before in the Garden of Eden. So this is important to know. So this whole idea of sitting in one place, fasting, praying, asking God to come and do what you can do, that is something, this is something very bad. We must be careful about that. All right, so when we say on our own, we can do nothing, it means that after your all your daily job or everything, and now it's time for you to sleep. While you are sleeping, your soul moves. That time, that is when you rely entirely, entirely on God to live. Because for you to be able to control things in the spirit, to, to see that in your dream, you can control things, you can make things to happen, you must allow Christ to run your soul, run your spirit being. This is important. I believe that God Almighty will speak this into your heart so that you understand. That is why it's important to pray before you sleep. But while you sleep, the enemy will come and take your soul. We have a situation where some people will be sleeping and then you will have a being come to you and then get into your, your body and then make your body to be weak and then now merge with your soul. And take your soul away. And then you wake up and say, oh, what is this? This is witchcraft. This is witch beating me and all that. We have all these things around there. People say these things. You should know that they are not just ordinary things. They actually take your soul. 
and then they can you know clone your soul to do many bad things you see a situation where you start having your friends hating you telling you i saw you in my dream as a witch and all that someone is actually running you as a christian we should learn to rely on our spirit our soul and body on christ jesus alone this is important this is important okay when you allow when you allow christ to take control he will run your soul while you are asleep you will not begin to see that you move to places you could not have been there been before you will be there and you will do the right thing you will see yourself challenging some some very bad things rejecting things and doing good things you see that this about all the time on your own you can do you can do nothing about that people are suffering today because their soul has been hijacked by satan and they are using their soul all right so that is what is happening it's true you must know about it there is a way out and the way out is calling upon the name of the lord genuinely from the depth of your heart it's not about you calling on the name of jesus christ in vain no you mean it when you say that word lord jesus come into my heart come and take my soul use it take control of me you mean it this is important it's you and christ the lord that will have that agreement that genuine agreement Christ will know when you speak those words, when you really mean what you said. And you will know when you say those words and when you really mean it. You know, yes, I have said this and I mean it. Because a lot of people, when they actually come genuinely and then when, when situations begin to turn, they be, see them doing different things, telling people, you know who I am. You know, because of Jesus Christ that I call, if not for Jesus Christ, I will just do this, I will just do this, I will just do this. You know that. You start telling people that how bad you are and all those things. We should know that when we let bygone be bygone let them be bygone all right don't call them back to yourself hmm? this is very important thank you lord jesus thank you father uh, please be careful because many things happen while you are asleep they come to you take your soul and start feeding you with some evil food you start eating evil food in your dream you eat food a lot. These are witchcraft. These are evil. They're not good. They, they destroy you. They cause you sickness and pain. They cause you so many things. Losses. Hmm? Alright? Christ will not do that to your body. Christ will take care of you. Christ will sanitize you. You will be strong. You will wake up with good health. You sleep like a baby and you wake up, you wake up like a giant. You see that? Strong. That is what Christ does. Mm? You should know that. This is important for you to know. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Uh, you know, many of us are in darkness, so because of that, they make so many mistakes. Even when you find yourself in darkness, so you so many mistakes. You know, now you don't see. You don't know where you put your leg. So you can just mistakenly break grasses, basically destroy things, and you say, oh, I don't see, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Yes, because you're in darkness. That's why. Our mission here, the Iwarobi family prayer, our mission is to own the light around you. And you know, when you own the light, switch on the light, it is your responsibility to open your eyes so that you can see what is around you. Our responsibility, the Iwarobi family prayer, our responsibility is to own the light around you. Your responsibility, you that is listening to me, your responsibility is to open your eyes so that you can see. I can never be able to help you to open your eyes. Don't, don't forget that. Because you have your own self-will, a choice to make. You have a choice to close your eyes even while the light is on around you. You have a choice to open your eyes so that you can see what is around you. This is something you must know. All right, a lot of people will open their eyes and when they do, they see snakes, they see lions, they see danger, dangerous, dangerous things, scorpions. 
See that? And they now know what to do, how to trade, how to drive those things away from them. While others, they refuse to open their eyes. I think they continue to fall into those dangerous things. So your work, you must take, do your own part. That is your responsibility. As someone who genuinely wants to work with Christ Jesus, it is your responsibility to open your eyes. All right? Let us do this, please. Let us do this. Let us open our eyes so that you can see. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. When you do that, it will help you to now have a direction in life. You will not be able to know who to do business with, who to work with, who to call your own, and who to shift. Because there are people you must separate from. You'll be able to know those ones. All right? You're not, you're not going to have problem with them, but you just separate yourself from them. All right? It will, this will help you when you open your eyes. All right? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you know, when you do that, the, the plan of God, the plan of Jesus Christ is to glorify God Almighty. And for Him to glorify God Almighty, He will help you to own the light around you. As someone who has a choice to make, you are to make a choice to open your eyes. And when you open your eyes, you will see what He wants you to see. And this will help you to know your position in life. All right? Let us do this. So thank you. Right now, we are going to be having... Uh, every one of us, some of us will be talking, inspired, giving us a word of inspiration. Let us join join the meeting. By the grace of God. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you. Uh, we will start by our our brother, our sister. Also, 
If you read verse, you know, 11, 12, 13, as I've said earlier, it also talks about spreading the gospel to so as Christian, these are God by spreading the gospel life from God by speaking the truth by living in righteousness, by living in faith, and also through the word of God. We should know that as Christian on a daily basis, we face so many battles here and there. And that is why we need the strength of God because our strength is limitless. Our strength, you know, it has a kind of expiring, it can expire. But when you depend absolutely on God, you know, it's a way of identifying yourself in Christ. When you depend on Him, it's a way of that. That is, you are telling God that you depend absolutely on Him, that you have, that on, his, on your own, there is nothing you can do. And remember, we are children of God. So this is our battle. The strength of God is our battle. And we should also know that that power resides in us. It resides in us. It's just for us you know, to tickle with us. God's power, it is in us. The day that we confess our Lord, that power is already residing in us. We just need to tap into it. So let us remember that no strength can come from us. But we need the strength, the power, and the wisdom that is divine from above. And this will help us and strengthen us in our Christian journey. Because of our time, I pray God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. And I know as we depend on God for strength and power, the Lord will continue to empower us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, Sunday. Oh, God bless you. everyone. Shall we pray before we start? Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, eternal rock of ages, as we are about to hear your word, O Lord. But I speak to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In everything that we're going to hear this evening, oh Lord, but I speak to me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me understand this word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we pray and we seek your face, oh Lord, this evening, oh Lord. Let will see you in a prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes, I, we can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you. Of this brief sermon is overcoming the devil's roar. I come again, overcoming the devil's roar. Let me first, I'll take my Bible, guess from Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22, which says, Hear ye not me, see it the Lord. We hear not. Tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that if cannot pass it and thou the waves thereof, thereof to, toss themselves, yet can they not prevail though they roar. Yet, can they not pass over it? As a Christian, we should not be, we should not fear about the enemy. The devils that surround us, we should not, be, we should not fear. So we should stand firm in the faith that is holding on to our faith. We can resist the devil's lure, and we should resist the feelings of discouragement. That is, we should face our God that we are serving. We should resist any discouragement that is coming to our ways. So we should hold on to God in anything, in any way that we are going to do. We should hold on to our faith. How do we overcome these enemy laws that surround the Christian? First of all, we should resist here with our faith in anything as a child of God. We should resist fear with our faith. That is, we should stand firm in our faith. Number two, that we should resist the temptation to flee. We should resist the temptation to flee. We can find that in the book of Galatians 1.16. I cannot go that because of our time. We can find that in the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 16. And also Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I just want us to know those chapters, those Bible verses. I don't, I'm not going there. And another one, the third one, then we should resist the feelings of discouragement and depression. 
we should resist feelings of discouragement and depression. That is, we should not allow depression to take over our life. If if a thought depression wants to come to our way, we should just resist it. Maybe there are some things, just take your Bible and read it, or you take a song from your head, from your heart, and sing praises to God. So those are the things that we should receive feelings of discouragement and depression. If we receive those feelings of depression, I think the animals, we, the enemies cannot have the power over us. And the last, the, there is another one point that I write it down here, that we should get back to bedrock of your faith. You get back to the bedrock of your faith. We should stand, I, I say it again, we should stand on our faith. I bring those, those verses, I have, those, I have some test verses in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 3, Hebrew 11, verse 6, Romans 10, verse 8, Exodus 33, 14, and Isaiah 41, verse 10. And the last point from there, don't let the enemy has the last roar. Though we should not allow the enemy to have the last roar upon our lives, upon our family, upon all, or maybe those people that are surrounding us, we should not allow the enemy to have the last roar upon us. I think that's the last point. Maybe may the Lord bless us as we continue in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. What is, uh, sister, what is your name? What is your name? Oh, sir. Yeah, what you? What is your name? You did not indicate your name so that we can. Ah, Oluwa Bumi. Oh, wow. That is great. Thank you so much, Bumi. God bless you. We appreciate your. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank yes, you. Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the next person, please. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My, my name is Eunice of Bore. Just to introduce my friend, my name first. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm here to this day, but I thank God for his glory. Breaking me here is not an accident, but to the glory of the Most High God. Uh, the little message I have for us today is uh, repentance and uh, re uh, repentance and remission of sin. Are you accepting that you have wronged God Almighty, even your core human being? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my Bible reading will be taken from the book of Acts chapter number 2, verse 38. Let me read. Are we together? Yes, we are there. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized in Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when we talk about the remission of sins, uh, we're talking about our own selves. You know, when the Bible, the same Bible, the book of Romans, made us to understand, said, do we continue in sin so that grace may abide? No. Same Bible said, no, God forbid. You know, at times in life, we begin to like acting like we are holy. We claim to be holier than thou in everything that we do. But no, there is something, there is a verse in the Bible that is said, that the word that be hidden in our heart, in my heart, I don't know about others, that I wish or you cannot, shall not sin against God. You know, when sin come into our life, it occupy all everything about us. At times you feel, I'm too holy, I didn't do it. Any situation you find yourself, even when people, even your own process is telling you this thing you are doing is wrong, you don't even take it. You take it as if like nothing. I have to pay back. No. Sin is one of the things that hinder us in everything that we do in life. You know, a human being, we have three parts of our body which concern God. Let me quickly say that God is source and we are God. But there is this particular part. One is the viral. We are holding our hands now, which is the Holy Spirit. The other one is our heart, which is the paper. And the other one is the soul, which is the God in us. 
If you are a Christian, this particular uh, uh, things that I mentioned, you should know the part they are taking in our own life. Sin is a very wonderful thing that can hinder you from so many things from God. In other hand, if you're asking God for so many things in life, we might be, we can't read ourselves for anything, it's only God that see it. The Bible makes us to understand, it says, He decided to listen to every conversation. You can tell anybody you are holier than thou, but right between you and God, you know yourself. That's why I am putting this before us. And as we should abstain from sin. Stay away from sin. The little we can do, let us do it. I don't know human being is perfect. But people are sitting or standing in that world. No one is perfect to deceive themselves or others. No one is perfect, fine. But we have to walk towards perfection. Even if we can do it. Are we hearing us? Yes, we are hearing you very well. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes we are hearing you. Thank you. Where are we Please, uh, yeah, pause. Let everybody pause, please. Thank you. Okay. We should stay away from things that will make us to destroy our tomorrow. Are you hearing? If everything we are pursuing on this earth is all about works, like things to live on this planet, it's what we are running after. For me, I don't know. I'm not preaching that I'm holier than anybody. But if everything on this earth is what we are running after, what about where we are going to? Like me, I always put something on my headline, every teaching I want to do, to so many places that I do. We are on earth for we are on vacation here. This is a place we will live, we will die and live. But there is a place we are going to, we can never live there. We will not die over there. We are, we are not coming back to this planet again. It's just for example, you tell your own child, you are going out there to go and play in the garden. Put on your shoes. But when you are coming, drop it at the down mouth, then take your shower before you enter your bed. He or she will say, Mommy and Daddy, no, 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 I'm comfortable. But who is going to sleep on top of that bed with sand and dirty? Is it not the child? So, when God is giving us a sound of stay away from these things that you are doing, that is not good, we should yield our ears to the word of God. Because yeah. sin is something that most people, most of us, are not seeing like a blanket we cover ourselves with. And of which the Bible made us to understand that without holiness, no oh, man see can God. see the Lord. But people will talk the other side of the Bible, he is love, he is kind, he is merciful, he is graceful. I tell you, brethren, grace is very good and it can also be very, very dangerous in our own life. If anyone tell you, do what you like, tomorrow God is there, God is this, God is that, fine, he is God. If a mother or daddy is telling his or her own child, don't do this, and the child continue to do it, at the end of it all, who is going to suffer it? God is, he is so great. He cannot face trouble in his life. He cannot face depression. He cannot face pain again. The word is telling us, it's just not for him. He's already been glorified. He's a God that was not made, but yet in existence. He doesn't need all, anything from us for his, name, for his name to be lifted up again. It's just for our own good. So what am I dragging into? Remission of sin, repentance. Accept sorry. Accept anything that will drag you to where you don't want to end up tomorrow in future. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you Amen. read deep and you make a great understanding, this book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38, you see that when you finish reading, it's a very short chapter in the Bible, very short verse in the Bible, sorry. When you see that to reason it, sin is something we have to stay away from. There, is, there are so many of us, we have been praying for one or three, five things for more than a decade of our life. But there is something you refuse to let go. God is not wicked. He can give it to you in a token of an eye. But that thing is the thing hindering you. Because if he gives you that thing, you are going to even double your sin more than what you have been doing before. Are we getting it? Yes. So let's learn to live a righteous and a good life. No one is holy, no one is righteous. That is the word of God in the book of life. But we should try to live a good life so that we will please the hearts of the Lord on the last day. This is the short one I have for us today. Though I'm a new person, but all the same, this is a short one now for us today. We should learn to live a life 
that we give God glory, a life that we give God. The Bible made us to understand, let your life so shine before men, that they shall, the God Almighty will see your good work, and they, they shall see your good work, and glorify the name of the Lord God Almighty. Evangelism, which is our supreme task in this particular thing that we are. If I should hold my Bible today, I'm not telling you not to smoke, not to drink, not to do whatever you want to do, it's your choice. As long as your chest or your liver, whatever, take whatever you are doing, you are on your own. He said, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good work and glorify the name of the Lord. I can't see you slapping, fighting people in, on the street and you hold your Bible, evangelizing. If I see you at the, at the plaza or whatever they call it, preaching, even if the distance I want to take the other side, I have to avoid you because your light is not shining. The Bible made us to understand say, evangelism is our supreme task. You are evangelizing. Telling people Jesus is good and you are not imi uh, you are not Im imitating Christ, which everybody believes is humble, kind, and lovely. Are we getting it? So for that reason, if you choose to be an evangelist for Christ, you should choose to live a life that will please him and the life that will that people will see you accept the person you are preaching about. Amen. Amen. So in, in, in our own daily uh, devotion. We should learn to live a life that pleases God. Let's say 10 things that you program your heart today. You might err, sin, I mean, in nine parts of it, but let one at least please the heart of God and you, your own heart. Do you know that times we human beings, we, we, we like, I didn't do anything today, but when you lie down, your heart begin to bring back everything that you have done today. Then you... A hardened heart, you say, oh, I'm, I finish everything perfectly today. No. Like the way I live my life, when I lie down after all day today, and I would just lie down and say, where have I done, gone today? What did I do? Well, how did I offend anybody? Did I do this? That is my old kind of heart that I have. I sit there and check my heart. If there's anything yet, I will make the person tell you, sorry, except that sorry is of no use. And even the person I'm talking to don't want to know, I will let be. I will get in it. We should live the life that pleases God and the life that will lead us to eternity. So we will not say, had I know in future. And especially all of us that have children, we should live an exemplary life so that we can live a life for them to continue when we depart to the glory of the Most High God. Thank you. It's glory, all I have for us glory, today. glory to God. God bless it. It's word in our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Amen. Eunice. God bless you. God bless you. That was great. Uh, our our sister, our sister. Do you have any message for us today? Uh, our sister, a queen, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening. queen. If you have a message for us, you can you can let us know. You can inspire us with the word of God. It's like she pressed on things. Yeah, uh, we are not hearing you, Queen, because it's like you press, you you block, you 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 mute the yes. Thank you. You can unmute the microphone. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you yeah. now. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Okay, my name is Queen Daniel, and my message for today is God cares for you. All right, we'll be looking at the book of Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 16, from verse 8. And we said, which then Jesus perceived. He said unto them, can you hear me? We can yeah, hear you can very hear. well. We can hear you. We can hear you. verse 8. O oh, ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourself? Do ye not understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning the bread? I should be aware of the living of the of the five days of the Pharisees. Amen. Uh, this passage is talking about uh, I mean, just went 
place to preach and Jesus went to preach. The disciples were hungry, but there was nothing to eat. And I think a little boy brought some loaves of bread and with that he gave thanks and multiplied it. But Jesus was displeased at the disciples' unbelief. He did not have faith in him that he was able to provide for him. Okay, in today's world, you know, people are filled with they have so many issues and most times the issues of life tends tends to take away their faith in Jesus. But Jesus is assuring us today that he cares for us and he will always make a way for us. In his in the book of Philippians chapter four, verse nine, we say, oh my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Yes, Lord. That look at the breadth of the air. They do not walk, do not talk, but they are always well dressed and they are always well fed. So as Christians, we are not meant to worry. Our main goal as Christians, our main target as Christians is to seek God first. The Bible says, seek ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and other things will be added unto you. That's Matthew 6, 33. So yeah, as Christians, we are meant to seek God first, believe in him, and every other thing we want to be taken care of. We should not allow the case of this world to overtake us. <coughs> so overtake us. And so because you lose faith in him. God mm-hmm. is always there. He's always there with us. And he's always there to meet our needs. All we have to do is trust in him. Have faith. Obey his words. Keep his commandments. Do all our part. And then God will do his part in our life. May the Lord bless his word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Queen. That was great. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. I want you to know that you have made an integral part of uh, uh, you know, of my heart, rather, because uh, what you do today will not be able to be erased from my heart. This is important to know. I thank you. I thank you. I thank all of you. Uh, you know, uh, as children of God, we 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 we, be, we become a Christ Spirit while we are asleep. You should know that when you are sleeping, when you could, your body can no longer move, Christ is your strength. Become your strength. Become your spirit. That is why. Someone who believes in Christ, they can actually do great things while they are asleep. All right, and that is why it is important for us to pray and ask Christ to come and take control of our spirit while we are asleep. All right, so you should know that. And when you can control your spirit, your dream, your spiritual life, that is only when you can control your physical life. Satan cannot be able to program you negatively. That is why it's important as Christians to pray and invite Christ to take control of our spirit. This is important. On that ground, I employ all of us to rely on Christ genuinely and daily at all time. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can see what is happening now. The gospel of Jesus Christ is so great. The gospel of Jesus Christ brought us together in one fold, a place where lions and bear, a place where the cats and rats, a place where dangerous, because we have different faces, so also uh, our spirit, but we are all laying down in one place, feeding from the throne of grace together. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You see that? That is what Christ can do. He can bring all of us together. Ordinarily, we will be fighting each other. This one, we say this and that. Yes. But now we are together in one fold, coming from different different backgrounds, different places, different country. This is what Christ can do. And it is marvelous in our lives. To God alone be the glory for what he has done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. I I want to know, uh, do we have any remark so that before we can make a prayer for today? 
Do you have any remark to make? Any special remark? Yes, do you have any special remark in regards to our our today's program? Okay, but I want you to know that this is a beautiful thing, and uh, is the is a, actually the first time for us to have such a, a marvelous, a very beautiful meeting, and I believe by the grace of God, we are going to see on how we can be able to improve in this uh, motion, so that we can be able to continue to to meet in order to edify ourselves. All right, this is important. Thank you. On this, on this, on this note, uh, let us let us pray. I want to pray for every one of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God of heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time. We bless your holy name, O oh God. I present before you this special thing. Father Lord, we thank you because in you there is fullness of joy. I thank you, Lord, because there is no one like you. All glory be to God Almighty, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for grace upon this team. I present this team before you, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you empower this team today. Give them the ability to spread your word everywhere in the mighty name of Jesus. Enrich them with your word and bless them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you because in you there is life. Heavenly Father, I present this team, this special team before you. Father, Lord, empower them today to be able to spread your word everywhere in the world. Enrich them with your word and bless them, O God Almighty. Heavenly Father, open doors of opportunity in their lives, O God. O Heavenly Father, help them so that this word that they speak today, Lord, will be a testimony in their life. That they will say, from the day I speak the word of God, from the day I edify our brethren, their life has never been the same again. Enter their spirit and walk with their spirit, O God. Use them in your vineyard, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I pray, whatever they desire in their life, give it to them. That correspond to your will, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today, in the name of Jesus, I shut evil doors in their lives. No evil shall come before them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I open doors of blessing in their lives. More abundantly blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because I know you answer my prayer. The prayer I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, I will be I will be talking to you briefly by the grace of God. I pray that you re remain blessed, remain in the spirit. Do not deviate from me. Let us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also, I want us to be prepared for next uh, next week uh, program question and answer program, a program that where we edify orders. Please. 
we have so many questions, and I also know that some of us have questions. If you know you have any question, prepare your question for that day so that we can edify the world. All right? And any one of you that have issue with data on that day, please do not relent effort. Tell us, because we want you to have enough data to be able to follow us up on that program. Don't forget, this team is the backbone of that program. All right? so that God Almighty will use you to bless people all over the world. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It will be 